one day in a very poor village, three sisters showed up and the people did not have a lot of food to go around, but they showed kindness to strangers. So they welcomed the three sisters into the village and then into their homes and they made them a meal even though they didn't have enough food to go around themselves. And then the three sisters, in giving gratitude and thanking them, appeared and revealed that they were actually corn bean and squash. So corn being the oldest sister who stands up straight and supports her younger siblings. Bean being the middle sister who clings to her older sister. How cool is she? How cool is she? Uh, and wraps around her and, and tries to do everything right by her sister and be similar to her by trying to be tall too. But being herself and being different and then the younger sister, Squash, uh, who, if you're an older sibling and you have much younger siblings, you'll know that at some point your parents gave up. Younger sister spreads out like Squash. Yeah, she, she just can go wherever she wants. And so these three sisters revealed to the people that they were corn and Squash and that if you grew them together, you could make more food. So then the village had more food that they could pass around. And so they, they could feed all their people because they learned from corn bean and squash, the three sisters. Hello, I am Nisha Design, and I'm working in the garden we're creating here at Hearst Drive School as part of the Botany Bay project. It's the summer holidays. And today I'm on my own watering the plants. Usually I am surrounded by eager young gardeners who care deeply for this garden. Like all Botany Bay gardens, this space is based on traditional ways in which indigenous people cultivate plants and grow food. And one of these is the Three Sisters. The Three Sisters Garden um, grows corn. You plant that first so it becomes a pillar. Then you plant beans and beans use corn because they need something to wrap around, but they also put nitrate back in the ground. So they actually make the ground better by pulling things from the atmosphere that other plants can't do. That really benefits corn. And then squash you plant last. And the squash has these big leaves that are pokey and they spread out across the ground and they can trap moisture in the ground because they create shade. Maize was first cultivated by the Maya people of Central America 10,000 years ago. Dr. Hannah Lance Ortiz is a Mayan scholar who has researched the history of maize and its role among the Maya today. Now the world only generally knows uh, white maize or yellow maize, but there are different, many different varieties. We have red, we have purple, we have black, we have uh, multicolored maize, we have spotted uh, maize, we have maize that is long, maize that is short, and, and also varieties that yield in two months or varieties that yield in three months, in four months, in five months. And all of these um, tells us about how crucial the cultivation of maize has been. The first ancestors, the first deities of the Maya creation story, they came together to decide what material should go into the um, creation of humans. And they opted for uh, clay uh, at the beginning and that creation of humans failed. Then they opted for wood and that creation also failed. And it was only when they decided to use maize that humans that were created out of maize were actually capable of knowledge and ethical behavior. These humans were able to recognize their creators. 
This is a Mayan maze god. It was a sculpture found at Copan, which is in Honduras, and they think was created in about 715 AD. When we look at this, we can see that corn was not only seen as a plant, food, and a, a sustenance. Maize was given godlike status. It was given a figure of a young man, a beautiful young man with youthful features, the ideal of Mayan beauty. He personifies this whole relationship with maize. If we are all made of maize, and maize comes in different colors, then we are all equal as humans, uh, no matter the color of our skin. But what happened at the beginning of the uh, of the century, of the 21st century, is that uh, a big hurricane affected a lot of indigenous farming communities in, in the Yucatan. And they came up with the idea, oh, why, why don't we organize a festival, bring people together, exchange seeds, and, and that was the beginning for the uh, festival for the exchange of uh, seeds. It was a very practical at the beginning, and it just started to grow more and more political. Because of course, you know, when you see all of this diversity that people are still maintaining in their communities and in the gardens, you cannot help but start talking about these points. When people start connecting these uh, intellectual conversations with um, ceremony, with uh, storytelling, then it, it actually becomes a multi-performance platform to continue this heritage of um, agricultural biodiversity and to celebrate it um, in as many different ways as you can. Ah. <laughs> The Indian environmentalist Vandana Shiva has estimated that people have eaten more than 80,000 plant species during their evolution, 3,000 of these consistently. But today, we rely on just eight crops to produce 75% of the world's food. With genetic engineering, that is reducing to only three, soya, rapeseed, and maize. Huge damage is being done to indigenous lands across the world, as forests are destroyed to grow these genetically modified crops. And because GM plants don't reproduce, there is no natural cycle in their cultivation. This is why these Maya people are so resistant to GM maize. Le dije, mire este. Va a ganar más dinero, tienen que probar estas semillas. No, 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 no. Con los que tenemos más bien. No le cae, cae que cubacable, Nalo. Ustedes no saben. Van a ganar más. Van a ganar más. Van a gan
en algún lado se habrá... Es que no sirve. La semilla que ustedes traen no sirve para nada. De ninguna manera. Las ver, semillas que nosotros ver, traemos son muy buenas. A ver, todo Joaquín. Me llaman todo chingo yo. ¿Qué dicen ustedes? ¿Los sacamos? ¿O de algo así? Vamos, fuera con ella, ¿verdad? ¿Por qué? Fuera, 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 mamá, Patri. Fuera, fuera. No sirve así de esas semillas. No cobren eso, no se sirve. Fuera, 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 fuera. transénico. Eso es lo que dice el pueblo maya. No queremos un transénico que nos esté refundiendo y queriendo matar a nuestra raza maya. Seamos conscientes de que nosotros tenemos que seguir viviendo limpiamente como lo han vivido los antiguos. ¿Y cuál es la mejor forma? Que es conservando la semilla tradicional. What they will often do is that they will use different varieties of maize and they will plant these different varieties of maize in different parts of the field so as to be able to have at the very least a minimum supply of food if all things go bad. If there's a drought, there's maize variety that will yield shortly before um, the time so that they will have food or if there is a flood there will also be maize varieties that will be resistant to this flooding so that uh, maintaining the variety of maize you know not just in terms of colors but also in terms of different life cycles is crucial for the survival of indigenous families and nowadays this is even more crucial when we are facing Drowns, uh, climate change, wildfires all over the world, indigenous agricultural practices are starting to be identified as key. July 2022 was one of the driest months ever recorded in the UK. It's August now, and there is a drought in many parts of the country. It hardly rains. Soon, I won't be able to use my hose pipe, and that could be fatal for the plants. On July the 19th, the temperature reached 40 degrees for the first time ever. This is climate change, the direct result of our mistreatment of the natural world. Thank mm -hmm. you. 